Welcome to this presentation about Slint. So I'm Olivier Goffer. I'm one of the co-founders of Slint. Slint is a UI framework. So this is a native UI framework as opposed to running in a browser. So it's not using a browser. And it's meant to be used in uh, for desktop, mobile, and embedded applications. Um, in a nutshell, Slint is made out of a markup language. So this this means that you describe the UI in this markup language, uh, describing the, all the elements. And then this markup language is compiled to C++ or Rust, or it can also be interpreted. And the so the, the UI is, is made in, in this markup language, but all the, the logic, the programming, is made in an actual programming language, for example, Rust, C++, JavaScript, or, or Python. The runtime Slint library is actually written in Rust. Behind the scene, it's Rust, but it can be compiled to just a, a static uh, binary. So we have API from different language, programming language, and the, the developer don't have to know it's it's made with Rust. They, they interact with the API just like if it was a normal C++ or, or, or JavaScript library. Regarding the license, uh, Slint is open source. It's uh, GPL. It's developed on GitHub. You can fill issues on GitHub. You can uh, submit PR. The GPL means that you need to share your, the source code of your application. So for that, we have if you don't if you don't want that, we have different licenses. Um, there is a royalty-free license for desktop users and mobile users, um, but for embedded, uh, there is a paid license. So check out our website. It has the pricing. Uh, let's get quickly to make a demo. So in this demo, we're going to um, use ESP IDF. So ESP, we have a component. We have a Slint component in the ESP IDF repository. The readme explain how to get started. So the first thing uh, you have to do is to uh, the font. The, the first thing you have you have to do is to follow the step to get um, the Espressif uh, SDK on your machine. So you can just follow the website from the Espressif website to get uh, the ESP and DF installed. Since you're, we are also going to compile Slint from source, you must have the Rust compiler installed for this to work. Um, you just follow the step to install the Rust compiler. There is a little tricky thing is that since we're going to work with with uh, targets such as Extensa. Um, this is not yet, as of now, in upstream Rust. So you need to install it from from uh, the the Espressive Rust project. They explain how to install how to install all the tools you need. Then we're going to follow the um, this thing. Um, so um, just to create a project, we use the Expressive uh, ESP IDF tool to to create a project and um, set the targets and uh, and everything um, as it stands. So what we have here is an expressive uh, box. So we have the box three. So in this case, this instruction was for the box one. So here we use ASP box three. We add um, also the slim dependency, so I'm now going to go directly to the uh, to the editor. Um, so we have added a Rust toolchain file just to specify that we need to use the Espressive compiler instead of any, anything else. That's because we use the Extensa, uh, so we need to use this compiler. Um, there is a CMake, CMake list that just tells that we're going to compile this network settings.cpp. And we also have, we require the Slint, Slint dependency, which is uh, the Slint dependency is one of the dependency in the, in the IDF component. And there is a special makefile, uh, CMake lists command here to tell CMake to compile this file to C++, and then it's going to be included. Um, so I can already start running this thing. So um, I can I can flash it. 
and uh, while it's running i will go back to the code and uh, i will actually resist this a bit so we can see um and show the slint code and this is basically already flashed so now we can see that i have my uh, this little interface is was flashed just now um this comes from this file this uh, slint file which is the markup file uh, which has this about about slint and this text and what we have here we have a little show preview button this comes from one of the extension that that we have so in VS code, we can, you can search for the slint extension and install the slint extension. Then we have a show preview button that, sh that appears and this uh, create open a, a preview window. Um, I can resize a bit things so I can have everything on, on the screen. Yeah. Um, this preview window, so if I type things, it update in real in real time in the preview and i can also enter the edit mode just trying to resize so from this edit mode i can even drag and drop things so for example i could drag a spin box or a, or a switch so i'm just gonna put a switch and I can move things around. So I'm going to move this text here. And what I'm going to do actually is a small example, which is like a, a network configuration tool. So network setting, network settings. I don't need uh, this. I delete it. Um, I will change the layout. The layout alignment to be on, on start. I don't I will also remove this this pin box, this switch. And as you see, when I when I do changes, um changes there, it also changes in the source code. So here I'm gonna rename this this switch to say enable Wi-Fi. And the, the, the text is changed there uh, for this. This one, I will also change and say, for example, enable Bluetooth. And it changes. So I'm going to quit this, this edit mode. I'm going to now be in edit mode because I will, I will add more things in the, in the code directly. Um, so one thing I would like to do is to list networks. So I would like to to be able to select uh, one of the Wi-Fi network, for example. Um, so I will have a struct network info. I will declare this struct that it has a SSID, which is a string and a strength. Uh, which is uh, an integer from 0 to 100, for example. And then I can add a property. It's an input property because we're going to set it from the, the C++ code later. Um, and this is a list of network info. I call it networks. Um, then I could put it here under under there. I would say I will create a, a for loop uh, for the net in networks, and for now just a text whose text is SSID. Of course, there is not yet any network. I will just add some dummy data here. Uh, so SSID hello and another one SSID world uh, need to add uh, mass. so there i can see my my network here uh, i'll just add some level for completeness uh, strength uh, and strength um, i'm gonna make it a bit more pretty now so instead of instead of putting it right here i will create a new component called uh, network details 
network details and this component will have a also a property of the same same time so I'll just copy copy this and uh, I'm gonna put a rectangle and I'm gonna put a uh, vertical layout with this thing here. Instead, um, I will call the network details. Network details with the network property is going to be the root networks. I'm going to format the file. Um, I can make it a bit more pretty by changing the background of this rectangle. Uh, so I can access the palette. The palette is going to be imported from STD widget. Here my IDE, the extension auto-completed, so it added even the palette there, so I can use it. And I have a controls background, which is a bit in a bit, bit different background. I'm going to add a bit of padding, uh, two pixel, and uh, some spacing, five pixel. And I want also to visualize the levels here. So I'm just going to, instead of a text, I'm going to put this in a horizontal layout. with the text in it. And here I'm going to have a rectangle to display the, the different levels. This rectangle will have, let's make it square. So it's width will be the same as its height. And background. For example, we could have, um, let's make it a, a gradient, a linear gradient um, that goes, for example, from green to black. And we are not, we're going to put this black level at its, at the strength of the network. So uh, strength divided by 100 so that the gradient is bigger for network that have that have a big uh, strength or not this is um maybe we need we can change a bit we can also use a transparent after the black and if we do the same we can have like different level black was maybe not the best color so we can change that to something like this, or we can we can use this feature to take something a bit more dark. Uh, yeah, and yeah, something like this. So that's all. And it was actually nicer with a, a lighter color here. Uh, maybe not so light. Um, anyway, you can you can like this design and preview in, in real time. And we can as well go back here to our, our terminal and uh, compile again and flash again to the device to, to have the preview in the device and to, to save. Uh, restart. Um, so while this is, while this is working, we can, we can try to also, what do we want? We want to, um, to hide this when the, the Wi-Fi is disabled. So we'll have a property shown. And when the thing is not shown, we will have a height. So let's change our height. So when it's going to be shown, uh, then it's like this terminal operator, we're going to use the preferred size based uh, preferred height based on the layout otherwise we'll use zero and we're gonna click this uh, so now it's hidden uh, let's ma let's make it shown when the switch is on 
So let's give this Wi-Fi a name, uh, Wi-Fi switch, and um, shown when the Wi-Fi switch is checked. Um, Yep, so we have already that. And in the meantime, we have our little uh, demo is already running running on the, so I'm not really seeing what I'm doing here, but um, yeah, and it's, it was before before I, I did this enabling. Um, what I can do is to make it a bit more animated. So I can do animate height for a duration of say, 300 milliseconds and so this already gives some some animation and um, um, I can also make it a bit more pretty uh, with an easing curve so for example is in so now we have an animation I can save this and compile compile this again Um, of course, I want the, the thing to come from the from the C++, so I will change that. I will add here a callback, the Wi-Fi enabled with a Boolean. And when the switch is toggled, I create a, a callback for when the switch is toggled, and I will call my root call callback self dot enabled um, so now it's it's flashing so I have again I have again the thing now with an animation when the when we load the network. Um, okay, now let's write the C++ code for our, our application. So for that, I'm gonna um, set that when you click on this, when you enable this thing, we are gonna use a task in the background to query the Wi-Fi. Um, I have here some code already, uh, some sample code. I will just copy paste this. Um, so this is gonna create two tasks, one network task and one UI task. The UI task is actually this one, UI task which uh, runs slint, so it sets everything, run, and we want that UI. So I create a callback called, called with Wi-Fi enabled. So I'm saying when on Wi-Fi enabled, then I can use a Lambda here. Um, when it's enabled, then what we're gonna do is to wake up our, our network task. Uh, there is some code for this here that I've copied. Uh, first things we will, we will, um, we will store this UI instead of being on this on the on the stack here. We will put it in a st static. So it's going to be a slint component handle of the main window. The main window is the name of our main component in app window .slint, or it's called app window actually. App window, uh, it's quite UI. And then we are just 
gonna do like this, then we need to dereference it UI UI and we can UI set network. So we're gonna just clear clear the network when pressing this button. Clear the networks and notify the network task. I need to move this a bit up. Uh, this network task, what it does currently, it just, um, so it simulates, I'm not gonna write uh, the actual code to, to read the, the, the list of Wi-Fi network. I would just hard code them. So it just here wait uh, three seconds after being wake, wake up as, as if it was searching for the network. And then I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna create a vector with a network info. So the network info was declared in Slant, and the Slant generated code, which we include there, uh, contained the struct uh, network info. Um, net, and then I can initialize it with uh, network info with a SSID, for example, um, home network and a strength. Did I spell it correctly? Yes. Um, strength of, uh, just put some number. That was one. Another one, a guest network. Less. Okay, so now I have this, this vector of network. I can just uh, pass that to Slint. I will call Slint invoke from event loop. So this function basically is gonna take a lambda and is gonna run this lambda on the other task, on the main task, on the event loop. I can move the, the nets there so that I can call my UI, which at this point I can use it because I'm in the, in the UI thread. And I will say set networks and um, I cannot just put the vector, I need to move that into a slint model. So this one is need to be in a share pointer. Make shared of a vector model. Vector model of uh, network info. Okay, I think that should be it. Um, let's try that. Let's see how many errors there is. Um, so this will basically, when you, uh, when you switch the switch, it will tell Slint to, no, it will tell the network task to, to do this work. Anyway, there was some errors. Uh, let's see what was that. Um, I seem to have forgotten a semicolon. again. More errors. Um. Network info. Is it called network info? Yes, network info. Let's 
So what's this error? Oh no. Expected. Ah, yes. Uh, I'm uh, I got a bit confused between languages here. Uh, this is C++, so it needs to use this syntax. Okay, we compile. And now we're almost there. Our UI task uh, should have just one pointer, not a double pointer. And um, get okay, it's flashing, and we have no or UI. I can try to. Um, not easy to do to show the camera to switch somehow uh, so basically when we when we press it waits three seconds and then it shows the network So that was it for my little demo in C++. If you want to use Rust, it's basically the same, the same concept here. Um, if you want to use Rust, uh, all you have to do, I have an example in, in Rust. I will close the previous example. Um, so this, this is again just the template that I'm opening. I have done uh, nothing with that yet. I'm gonna copy copy over the code from from previously, and this is this is Rust. In Rust, it's the it's the principle. The principle is that you just um, call slint and slint build. We have a build script that runs through the build.rs. So the build.rs, just, you just tell him to compile the your slant files. And then for the main rs, we can include, include slant. And here we have our little uh, network settings, um, which is built uh, from Rust, of this is no, not yet running on a microcontroller. To run it on a microcontroller, we have some docs. You would not want to, so it's in our, it's in our documentation on our Slim documentation. We have a link uh, to the microcontroller documentation, and you just uh, can basically implement a platform. If we already have a platform for this. You would need to use ESP HAL, so this is basically bare metal to show how to to develop this in bare, bare metal. Um, so I am out of time, I think. So I will end the the talk here. Thank you.